Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about this awesome vintage leather jacket. It is a cow leather CHP or California Highway Patrol style jacket, what they call an LAPD jacket from cow leather. And we're gonna break down a little bit about the brand and then go into all the details about the jacket, like the materials, the hardware, construction, fit, how it wears on the body and sizing advice, overall wearability and some styling uh, impacts of the design and talk about cost and value and just overall the, is it worth getting a vintage or new cow leather jacket? One of the really interesting things about jackets made in California for the Highway Patrol is that there are a bunch of small makers that kind of popped up after California added all these miles and miles and miles of highway and they had police departments riding motorcycles. And so those individual departments had their needs and a lot of local makers sprung up to meet the need. And so uh, cow leather is based out of Ventura, California. What is really remarkable is that they make these jackets in this California Highway Patrol style that are just absolutely beastly, just so beefy. Like honestly, uh, I mean, this jacket weighs about seven pounds. <laughs> so very heavy, very robust. Uh, jackets that have really stood the test of time in, in terms of style and have achieved a kind of iconic collector status from cow leather specifically and there are a bunch of similar ones including owl leather which was uh, like a spin-off and there may be some bad blood between owl leather and cow leather I don't actually know all the full details there but the the idea of this style as a jacket that was made for the California Highway Patrol by all these little individual makers. Well, a bunch of them are gone, but the ones that remain have made some incredible jackets. All right, so let's talk what this jacket's made of. It's really heavy at around seven pounds, and it is this really thick leather drives the majority of that weight, which of course drives the majority of the cost for the jacket. It's a leather jacket after all. So let's talk about it. I don't actually know if it's cowhide or horsehide. It's one of the two. Uh, some of the markings and the nature of the leather makes me tend to believe it may be horsehide, though either way, it's heavy and it has a thick top coat. This is a leather that's intended to be a protective armor while riding, so it bears those hallmarks of thickness and durability, uh, protective top coat to protect against the elements, and uh, abrasion resistance and all that kind of stuff that you're looking for in protective motorcycle gear of the bygone era. And the leather really is honestly phenomenal. It's beautiful, it has an awesome texture that it's built up over time. And one of the interesting things that Cal does is because this leather is thicker and they're using as much of the hide as they can, they will end up getting these kind of striations or thicker areas that some makers would simply just put to the side, but they're perfectly functional and they can lead to some really kind of interesting, beautiful looks. In fact, what's kind of interesting about it is that there are brands like uh, Fine Creek Leathers out of Japan, which come to mind, where an entire jacket will kind of be made of that particular part of the hide. But for a maker like Cal, it's just a part of the function and the process that they used to make rather than going for a particular stylistic look. And on this jacket in particular, it's, it's apparent on the arms, but really becomes obvious on the back. There's this huge panel that kind of has this awesome texture to it that is because of their use of the hide as much as they can get. Now, aside from the leather, what is this jacket made of? What are the components and everything? The interior is lined in a very smooth, uh, what appears to be rayon, and there is uh, a bit of fur at the ends of the sleeves that is part of the sleeve closing mechanism, basically. And there is uh, heavy duty talon zips. The center one looks, it's a, at least a 10, maybe bigger. <laughs> the main zip is a huge brass zipper. Uh, the sleeve zips are more standard. They look to be maybe a six or an eight style size zip. And uh, from what I can tell, they appear to be the original zippers on this jacket. This is a robust zip that has really stood the test of time. Really classic quality from Talon Zipper. Uh, other things the jacket is made of, really uh, rawhide for the lacing for the, the side adjustment. This jacket is a CHP or chip jacket, and it has the kind of classic design elements of the style, which are, it has two slanted pockets for hand warmer in the front, and they have a kind of stitching that goes 
horizontally across from top to top on those zippers. The jacket features snaps to put on a Mouton collar, and it's kind of a standard inclusion for this jacket that this being a used vintage jacket did not come with the jacket, unfortunately. They also typically come with a uh, a throat muffler or warmer so that you have the fur collar around the sides and then a muffler in the front <laughs> to create a complete wind block system for around the neck for warmth and colder weather. Uh, I mentioned one design element which is the fur cuff uh, that is interior to the end of the sleeve so that when the sleeves are zipped it can keep your your wrists warm and not allow air in without having to have that really thick leather too tightly cinched around your wrist. It kind of acts like a gasket in a way. And I think it's a really cool feature on these jackets. And then uh, an asymmetrical main zip. Yeah, kind of classic cross zip motorcycle style. And then the waistband on this jacket is kind of the final iconic part of the design, which is it is this doubled up, very thick leather that is stitched in rows to create a rather stiff waistband around the bottom. And the jacket is actually has three panels for the bottom which is to say there are two front panels which are separated by the zip and then a large main back panel which there is some uh, leather that acts as a gusset between those the front that goes around the sides and then there's some gusseting between the back panel and the two side panels. And so it allows for that stiff waistband to move without kind of impinging on your hips when it's all the way zipped. You know, really well thought out design and just a part of that chip motorcycle heritage. I would also say that pretty typically, and it's true on this cowl, is that the the back has what some people call beaver tail, where the back dips and is significantly longer than the waist next to it. And this is intended to cover the lower portion of your back while you're driving a motorcycle. One thing to note about this leather, and it seems to be true about several cows, and I think it just has to do with the way that they handle treating the leather, it's pretty squeaky. Just listen to this. Could be a make or break kind of thing for some folks. You can reduce it by cleaning, especially the area under the armpits and doing a little bit of conditioning. That tends to reduce that noise. The construction on the jacket is really solid and kind of reminds me of the work from SHOT. However, I would say there are some areas of wavy or even stitching, especially in those super thick areas at the waistband where they just don't quite get the line straight. But nothing's falling apart and the jacket is really robustly put together with very thick thread. So how do these jackets fit? Well, I am five foot nine, 175 pounds, and this jacket has no size label. <laughs> That's because all cow jackets are custom made. And so it lends to this kind of thing where you really have to know your measurements kind of, but you also have to understand that these jackets are built as a kind of standard with a pretty wide chest and shoulders, especially chest, and they taper rather dramatically. So they tend to be a really kind of generous, forgiving upper body fit, and they taper to your waist size. Now this is because these are intended to be practical jackets that are your one issue jacket while you're working for the California Highway Patrol and it needs to be able to essentially cover you throughout the, the year no matter what the weather is. So they tend to build in a lot of space for layering and mobility, hence the very large pit to pit and the wider shoulder. And so those are really both functional features. And of course that, that taper, that sharp taper, brings the jacket tightly in against the waist so that it can keep the wind out and stay on your body properly. So once again, the form follows the function with this style, but it can lead to some confusion as to what size really works for you. And I would say, and this is a very interesting thing that I found with this jacket. Now, this particular jacket is a little oversized on me, but the pit to pit is way oversized on me. This jacket has a nearly 24 inch uh, chest. I typically take at the very largest around 22 or 22.5 inch. So as you can see it is much much bigger across the chest than would typically work for me. The lengths all match up very well for me and the hem size really matches well for me and has slightly large shoulders and this massive pit to pit. <laughs> now I could probably use 
maybe an inch or so or an inch and a half smaller across the pit. But I want to take this moment to just say that you should expect a larger pit to pit on these cow leather jackets than you might take in other sizes. And I found that this is kind of comparable to what happened to me with the Aero Highwayman. You know, I got an Aero Highwayman, which is a short and boxy jacket. And with that jacket, I took the standard sizing advice, which brought me two sizes down from my standard tie size. So I got a 36 in that jacket. And the Highwayman has about a 22.5 chest, which is really bigger than I normally take, but it just works. And that's what I want to say about the cow is that the bigger pit to pit just works. You have to break it in and I'm sure it took some time. This jacket's from the 60s, but you can expect larger pit to pit sizes to work for you in this particular style. Okay, wearability. And this is one of the things that I think is most awesome about this jacket, which is that it weighs seven pounds and it just disappears when worn. It is honestly maybe the most comfortable leather jacket that I have ever worn. <coughs> Even considering that weight, and I've worn heavy jackets that you could feel it and it was not comfortable. And after just an hour or so, you could just start feeling a tension headache come on from your muscles just fighting against the jacket. This cowl at its weight with this robust leather is so enjoyable to wear. <laughs> <laughs> you can really forget about it except for the squeaking, you know, the, uh, which is kind of a funny thing. And I, I have to say kudos to those folks over at Cal that made this pattern to be so comfortable. Now, yes, as a caveat, this jacket is a little oversized on me, but even so, it's very nicely made for working with the body. Everything you need to do on the day-to-day -day is very comfortable and approachable in this jacket. There's no position that impinges or starts to feel like extra tension or difficulty. It's just very well made to move on the body. That being said, let's move into the style talk about this jacket. This is a jacket with an edge. This is a robust piece of leather that obviously is made for riding on motorcycles. And unlike a jacket like the Shop Perfecto, which is kind of achieve this very widespread usage and iconic status throughout kind of mainstream culture, the chip jacket has that kind of status in a smaller niche. And so while you're wearing this jacket out and about and thinking about styling this jacket, it's just going to be a little more biker and a little less everything else when you're wearing it. And so I think that's something to keep in mind. You know, it, it does have a harder edge than the Perfecto or a lot of other motorcycle styles like the Cafe Racer, which is kind of minimalist by design. This jacket is maximalist by design. <laughs> and so you need to be aware of that and just dress accordingly. I, I think uh, when it comes to different types of styles, it works with a lot of things, you know, which is true for a black leather jacket and, a, and, and especially true, I think, for beaten up or vintage leather jackets. They're easier to pair with things. And I found that to be the case with this cow. Without getting too lost in the weeds, just know that this is a jacket that is gonna have a presence. And when you're wearing it, you have to account for that. That does make it somewhat less versatile in the traditional sense. And it makes it a little bit more of a ask of your confidence to wear this jacket. And for some folks, it's just gonna be too much. But I find that as I've worn it more, it is really, much like the Shot Perfecto, become more and more a favorite. And that's largely just because it's so easy to wear that I look forward to wearing it because it's so comfortable and easy to wear. And I come up with reasons to wear it, if you know what I mean. And so that really just speaks to an awesome jacket in my mind that you're looking for that next excuse to, to work it into an outfit. All right, so we have to now talk about cost and value and is it worth it? Now, with used vintage cow leathers jackets like this one in pretty good condition, you can find them perhaps from $350 to $700. And anywhere in that range, I would call a good bargain, you know, especially depending on the condition. A lot depends on signs of provenance. Like, does it actually have the cow leathers label in it? Or does it just look like a cow leathers and you're kind of hoping that's what you're getting? And if you find a vintage cow in very good condition 
in a popular size, like something between 40 and 44, and it has the Mouton collar and all the other fixings, or maybe even the service belt that these jackets were made with back in the day, you know, the, it may go for over $1,000, maybe more than that at auction, depending on the level of interest at the time that the jacket's going for sale. And that's because these jackets really have kind of attained this, this status amongst collectors of very high regard uh, because of the way their patterns work and because of the history of the brand and because of that incredible leather. And so, you know, it's a little harder with vintage necessarily because the price ranges so much. So let's talk about also a new cow because this company is still making jackets today. You know, the list price right now for their LAPD style, which is what this is, is $1,800. Now, that's kind of expensive. It's more expensive, for example, than the Rainbow Country jackets that I have reviewed, if you just convert them straight to U.S. dollars from their yen price. Um, and so you get to thinking, is that too much? Well, I don't know. There are some accessories that are included in that price that kind of drive it up, which... It comes with a Mouton collar, which this jacket doesn't have. It comes with the throat protector. It comes with a hand-tooled service belt. You know, those things all have a cost with them. And so I have to imagine, you know, maybe getting the jacket without all of the add-ons could bring the price down to something around fourteen dollars or $1,500, which for a small maker, a specialty maker, with this kind of heritage, based in the United States, Making a jacket that is this beastly and this comfortable with this just incredible presence to it. New? I mean, that does seem kind of worth it if it could be driven down a little bit. Just a touch. Maybe you don't get all the add-ons and you bring your price down. Now, if you want to go for the whole kit and caboodle and the classic thing, especially if you're riding a motorcycle in this jacket, then maybe the additional cost for those extras makes more sense for you. But it is definitely on the higher end of the cost scale. To me, it's a bit of an unanswered question because I haven't handled a new cow. And it's something that I'm really interested in trying out and I will be doing in the near future uh, if all the stars align. So I'll have to report back on that, on the new cow value experience. In conclusion, man, what a jacket. What an incredible jacket. I really love and have grown to love over time more and more this robust, squeaky, comfortable, absolutely badass jacket and you know I think the thing that may drive people off from it is that it is so robust and so obviously a biker jacket but when you find yourself going for it and then realizing that it's just that good and you, you just got to wear it again and you're working it into your outfits more and more that to me is just an, a sign of a great jacket and so it, it really totally makes sense why these cow jackets have such a kind of iconic, uh, dedicated following in the vintage community. Do you have a cow jacket? Uh, have you considered one? Have you gotten one from an alternate maker like Al's? You know, the Langley's Columbia's this kind of style of jacket too. Um, let me know what you think, and thanks for coming along the ride. The ride.